Okay, hi. I'm talking to Neil Arnott, and he's up in Canada today, and he's going to help us with the Muse in May project. Neil, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Um, well, my name is Neil Arnott. I uh, have an honors degree in economics, uh, MBA from McGill. Uh, I have about 20 years' experience in transportation. Uh, I worked uh, 10 years with CP Rail and uh, another 10, actually 12 years, I guess, with uh, Traffic Tech. Um, I guess in terms of what do I do on a day-to-day basis, uh, I, I really kind of wear two hats, I guess. I, um, I head up the IT department for Traffic Tech. I'm a VPIS. And what I do really is I manage the infrastructure, so the kind of all the network stuff and all the email and phones and cell phone stuff. And then on the, um, my other hat I wear really is uh, software design, designing the software that kind of really runs the business. Um, it's called a, a, a TMS or a transportation management system. Um, we look, when I was first hired back in 2001, we really looked at a build versus buy scenario. Um, since Traffic Tech is a third-party logistics company, we act kind of as the middleman in the transaction between a carrier and a customer. So we're a service-oriented uh, company. We don't own any trucks ourselves. So really the software is a way of kind of us being uh, a strategic advantage to the company because it really... With the software, you can kind of work any which way you want. The software kind of can um, force a process or can really um, look at kind of working the way the company wants to work. So it's been really nice in that regard. It's one of the most expensive ways to go in terms of, you know, you can definitely buy off-the-shelf packages much cheaper, but by designing your own software, you can really... Uh, work the way you want to work and you don't have to really wait in line in terms of you know other customers setting priorities uh, or other customers of the software setting priorities you run the software you design it you have the people on staff so that's kind of really what's been nice about the whole process of that and so you do that you uh, you head up the team that creates the software for that and what your company does correct correct yes yeah we have uh, four developers on staff uh, BA or business analyst. Uh, my, I myself get spec as well. We have a project manager and a QA person, a quality assurance person, and, and a trainer. So, all within the IS department. Okay. And I like to talk. I like to talk about information services rather than information technology, because I find technology can really be done for technology's sake, and I really like to stress service more than technology. So let me ask you this: How would you compare your form of creativity versus other forms of creative creativity out there, such as you know music or art? I mean, do you think it compares in any way? And if so, how? Well, I, I think what's I guess a little different of of and not to say anything about art or anything, but I guess with uh, with the software, um, it has to have a functional purpose. It has to. Um, do something, right, in the sense of art is nice to look at but and could maybe change your mood and all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't really necessarily do something. For, it's not functional. So um, I think, though, with software design, and that's one of the reasons I really want to take part in this program because I thought it was really interesting to talk about software design as an art form because I think there is really a, a elegance, a, a real kind of uh, beauty in kind of software and in I, I actually even call it a sexiness which is is made fun of by a lot of people in my company but I think really by designing something it's and being very uh, you you have to take a very complicated process and make it simple much like a like a teacher that takes a uh, complicated process and a good teacher can make everybody understand by breaking it down you take a process, a business process, and you break it down and you, you force a process or you, you automate a process or you, you make it so that everybody can kind of see it and do it. And you create corporate knowledge in that, in that respect as well. So, and it's, it's truly, you want to make software very intuitive. You want to make it so people just looking at it can understand what they have to do. 
Can you can you tell me then? I guess take me through the creative process for you. Do you start off with an idea? Do you see something that strikes you and you think, oh, I'd I'd like to work with that. I'd like to design something around that. Or how does that work for you? I would say, uh, I mean, there's definitely priorities from the business. So you definitely kind of have to, you know, um, twice a year, kind of we go at, to the manage- at the management level. We decide we're going to work on, you know, these five or six projects where kind of different departments have kind of come, you know, with their ideas and their, their issues or their their limitations, that kind of stuff. Um, so we kind of we, we kind of prioritize from a project basis, but literally it's like a one-liner. It's like, you know, we want to... Um, you know, change the invoicing process, or we need to make the invoicing process more efficient, or, or we need to book trucks better, or we need to, uh, you know, trace our trucks better, that kind of stuff. So it, it's a very, it's much more of a like a broad concept type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, then what we do is we get all our uh, what we would call our subject matter experts or our shmees, I guess, in the industry. Um, so we get your your people who are kind of uh, in that department or working day to day in that stuff. Get them in a room with your your business analysts. Uh, your developers as well. I always like to put the developers in there as well because developers kind of think a little bit differently. I find they can really spin things, um, and you kind of you walk the process. Um, there's kind of we've gone more to an agile development style. Prior, we used to do more what's called a waterfall. Waterfall is you try and think of everything kind of um, everything that's going to happen or anything you need. Whereas agile, you do more kind of little sprints. You do like two week sprints. So you kind of you have to develop something quickly. You make sure everybody can see it. At the end of the two weeks, there has to be something that can be tested or that can be looked at. Um, and then you kind of you work in these little sprints, and everybody kind of works together. You have uh, you know your BAs there. You have your um, you have your developers. You have your QA person. You have your your shmees in there, and you kind of just it. It's amazing how where you start from versus where you end up um, in terms of it starts off uh, in one area and you kind of, as it, as it, what's nice about the two-week sprints is things, you only do what you have to do, but you always kind of, you always do what's important. And the, it kind of morphs over time and it might, you always have to make sure you obviously solve the business problem, but you also, um, you with the business people there, you really get what they need, and you kind of break it down to its core of what's truly required. That being said, and you had already mentioned this about how often art is not functional, but what you do needs to be functional. I mean, is does that make it harder for you? I mean, the pressure to create and know that you're creating for a company that needs to be functional, that there's dollar signs at the end of the day. So for you, the designer... You know, um, and the leader of this creative team, did, does that make it more difficult for you to create? And is there pressure associated with that? I would say yes, there's pressure, but it also makes it more rewarding when it's a success. Um, yes, it's a challenge, but you can actually measure success in some ways. You know, whether it's whether it's your invoicing faster, you know, your uh, you know your accounts receivable, you know, days to collect type of stuff whether you're, you know, so many invoices per day, per person, all that kind of stuff, uh, whether, you know, you're closing that many more sales leads to turning them into customers, whether you're booking that many more trucks per CSR, that type of stuff. So there's actual measures uh, that you can kind of go back on and say, yes, it was a success, or unfortunately, no, it wasn't a success. But again, you can refine and kind of, well, why wasn't it a success? You know, do a postmortem, that type of stuff. So, is it more of a challenge? I guess, but it's kind of what I thrive on. It's kind of what you have ability to change the business. You have the ability to truly make a difference in terms of the business and get feedback from everybody. And really, it's it's a nice feedback loop. It's it's. You create something that everybody uses, and if they don't like it, you know, hey, well, tell me why you don't like it. I got no issue if you don't like it. Just tell me what we did wrong. So, you and, know. and you work with a team of people. So, uh, yes. do you enjoy working with a team of creative people? Yes, and you yes, find very much so. You very find much that so. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, I love working with people, and 
uh, people were, you know, I mean, writing specifications or building specifications, building software is all about communication. And it's, it's when you're actually talking to the business, it's, it's not really, uh, I mean, a good a person who writes, who, who works with the developers, who writes the specifications, the business analyst, should really be more of a listener than a talker, really, because you have to bring it out of the, out of the, of the subject matter expert. You have to, and it's all about, you know, nomenclature. It's all about listening to what they say and how they say it, and then kind of rephrasing things so that you, you're clear because it's, it's truly about understanding the process. And what's also nice about the whole thing is in a very short amount of time, the, the business analyst or the designer really, to me, knows more about the business in a very short amount of time because they have to understand all the different processes and how the business functions and how all the different departments function together to make the software truly reflect that. And at the end of the day, I I can tell that you're very excited about what you do. <laughs> you know, and and you work for a, a big company in your country, and so we know that you're good at what you do too. What's the most satisfying part of your work? Is it when you release one of these these projects that are based on sprints? Is it seeing the actual product in use? Is it seeing the employees engaging with products that you've designed? Is it knowing that it's successful? I mean. What is what's the best part of the day for you after designing? Um, definitely, kind of coming close to release, releasing it, um, seeing the impact on the business, uh, and sometimes it's not always instantaneous. Like certain applications, yes, would be certain you know um, portions of the software um, would be instantaneous change. Other ones, you know, are more kind of take longer to kind of. Um, to get the true benefit out of it or feel the benefit out of it. Um, but I would have to say the, the most satisfying to me is really is, like I said, is changing the business or being able to help the business, being able to get people to add more value. Like the software itself should get rid of some of the mundane stuff. People should be adding more value. If there's stuff that could be automated, let's automate it and let's bring people up and have them work on more value-add stuff and just kind of keep refining. And you mentioned the word release, and I think that we found that a lot with the Muse and Nay project is um, a lot of artists, you know, when their creations are out there, there's a certain sense of release, whether it's, you know, finishing composing a song or or a painting, a painting that I think that artistry all has that in there. It's that, that huge thing that tends to happen once it's done, and then you either release it out there into the world or you, you know, we have some artists that struggle with holding on to their art desperately, and they don't really want any. <laughs> <laughs> to get near it, you know, because it's a very personal relationship. And I think that art, it's been my experience thus far with the Muse and May project. It seems that art certainly is found that way in every single medium, you know, and the way that artists perceive their work and, and why it's important to them and, and is there going to be an impact, you know, exactly. Um, you know, and it, of course, in your case, it's an impact on a company and how successful a company is going to be. And, and if, you're, uh, if you're employees of the company and if the clients of the company, if everybody's happy. Um, so yeah. that, that being said, I guess my final question would be, uh, do you have any advice for software designers, for especially, I guess, you know, people that are young, coming out of college, or anybody, anybody who's into software design that struggles with it? Um, I would say you have to look at business benefit always with software design. Um, don't, don't really get focused on technology for technology's sake. Think about the business use. Think about um, understanding the business. I think it's a much stronger developer or software designer who truly understands business. Um, I think that's key. It's a key. I mean, I remember, you know, back in, you know, the early 90s when, you know, IBM was talking about the business analyst role. Like it didn't even exist, you know, and that was somebody who kind of was a universal translator almost between um, the business and technology. I mean, I think that role, even though obviously technology is really everywhere now in the consumer type stuff, I think it's still a very key role in terms of understanding both. And I think a software designer needs to understand both, not just be about the technology. 
Excellent. Thanks so much for your time today. We really appreciate having you. It's Neil Arnott from Traffic Tech, and he's been talking to me, Kimberly Howard, Lady XO of Exosphere Radio. Thanks so much, Neil. No problem. Thanks, Kimberly.